so let's do just a big information dump for you. Our exponential function, we're going to compare this to our logarithmic function. We just got done saying on the previous page, in the previous video, that these guys are inverses of each other. So I want us to talk about what those differences are going to be and what the similarities are. So for your exponential function, f of x is a to the x. We've already talked about how the inverse is the logarithm. So we say log base a of x. For our exponential, our domain was all real numbers. Our range was 0 to infinity. We had a horizontal asymptote of y equals 0. So if this is what we have for our exponential, and we said that the logarithmic function is the inverse, Tell me what information you get. If I tell you domain, range, and horizontal asymptote, what does that tell you about your inverse? Your range is negative infinity to infinity. Okay, first let's start with what's the domain? Uh, zero to infinity. Zero to infinity, which, like you said, our range is now the domain of this guy, so that's all real numbers. And instead of having a horizontal asymptote, what are you going to have? Vertical asymptote. And what will be the equation for the vertical asymptote? So instead of y, it's x equals 0, which is where it goes from being a horizontal to a vertical asymptote. Okay. So if you remember way back when, I said there were two things that we had that would restrict our domain for our functions. We said for the most part, the domain for your functions would be all real numbers, unless you run into two things. What were those two things? Um, one of them was logarithms. Nope. That's not what I said. Back in the day, so there were two things that can restrict the, our domain. Yes, Callie. Uh, fractions and exponents. Ooh, no. Fractions is one. The other guy was square roots. So if we didn't have a fraction or a square root, we were typically saying the domain should be all real numbers. That was then. Now we've added another function that has a restriction, and you see that his domain is just a bit more restrictive than the square root. The square root could include zero, and it goes zero to infinity. The logarithm does not include zero. So if you see a logarithm in your function, you know that you have a restricted domain. Okay, now let's talk about the key points that we would have had for the exponential. So for your exponential, we made a t table of values, and I said these are the guys that form our basic shape. If I plug in negative 1, I got the reciprocal of the base, 1 over a. If I plug in 0, I get 1. If I plugged in 1, I would get a. Those were the key points for the exponential. Talk to me about what your key points would be for the inverse. 1 over a and negative 1. Right. right, so you take these ordered pairs and you just flip them around. So 1 over a would correspond to negative 1. Instead of 0, 1, you have what? 1, 0. You have 1, 0. And instead of 1, A, you have A, 1. When we were graphing exponentials, 0, 1 was our anchor point. It was the base point. We built everything from that guy. Likewise, for the logarithm, 1, 0 is going to be there for all of our logarithmic functions. So relative to your origin, wherever it happens to be, if you, have, if you happen to shift it, uh, 1, 0 is going to be the first point that you graph, and you build everything else from there. And we're going to look at those graphs here in just a moment. Uh, the rest of this page, I'm just going to fill with these properties of logarithms, and then we'll work through examples illustrating each of these guys. All right, so properties of logarithms and also some nice special theorems. So let's start here. These properties of logarithms are used to rewrite, break down, or maybe even condense logarithms. So for x, y, 
and a greater than zero. And of course, your base is not equal to one. Here's what we have. We have these three statements. Log base A of the product xy is the same as saying log base A of x plus log base A of y. So a product inside the logarithm can lead to splitting up the log and doing the sum of the log of those factors. If we have division inside of the logarithm, division inside the log means that I can separate to two logs and do the difference. So log base A of x minus log base A of y. And this last one, this says log base A of x to some power, let's call that r. You can write this r times log base A of x. So if you have a power inside of a logarithm, you can just bring that out in front. So these are properties we're going to use to kind of rewrite and split up um, our logarithms here in just a moment. A couple of, a couple of other guys I want you to see is that there are two special logarithms that we talk about. We have the common logarithm. Now the common logarithm, you're going to see this written as just log of x without a base explicitly written. And when you see this, that means that we're talking about log base 10 of x. Okay. And then we have what's called the natural logarithm. So the natural logarithm, you're going to see it written as ln x. Now, I tend to write mine as cursive. Um, and that's just to make it so that it doesn't look like a 1 when I write my L. If I write this, it should be very clear that I'm talking about ln, which means the natural log. And the natural log is log base e of x. We do a lot of stuff with natural logs. Um, because we do a lot of stuff with, uh, with base e. We see e all the time. We saw that with the continuous compounding from the other day. Um, a lot of you know, growth and decay models are based off of using Euler's constant e. And if you look on your calculators, okay, see how well we can see this. Um, if you ever forget what's what, Look at your calculator for help. Typically, on the left side of your calculator, you're going to see your log button right here, and you're going to see the button for ln. Above log, it's kind of hard to see, but it says 10 to the x. That 10 meaning that's the base that's associated with log. Above natural log, ln, you see e to the x. Again, making that connection between natural log having a base e and e to the x. So if we can remember that, we're going to be in good shape. And you see this happen a lot of times on the calculator. If you look down here, you see there's the button for x squared. And the secondary feature to that would be it's almost inverse the square root. So if you're ever on a test and you say, oh, Mr. Craig, I, I can't remember what natural log is. I don't know what the base is. Look at your calculator. I may or may not tell you that. I might just give you the default. You're supposed to know that. OK. Bye bye. So we're going to come back to these guys as well. Now, these next two guys, especially, oh, this, this, this last guy is, is amazing. I love it. I love it. You got to love it. You can fit, you can squeeze it on there. You might need to get a new notebook, though. Yeah, this is my second one. Your second notebook? For this class, yeah. Oh. I've already gone through like a ream of paper myself. 
All right, so here's a theorem on inverses. Log base A of A to the X is going to kick back just X. So the key thing here is that if the base of the log is the same as the base of the expression inside, it's as though they cancel out because they're inverses, and you're left with just the power on the inside. So imagine how I could give you a problem that's very, very simply that. You don't even have to have a calculator. You just say, oh, these guys are the same. Huh, I just put my answer there. Wouldn't that be great? Wouldn't you love to see that on a test and get some free points? Who wants free points? OK, then you better study. Now you're going to be fine. You're still young. Here, if I do A, and then I raise that to a logarithm with the same base, I'm going to get just x. So if you see that these guys are the same, same base, you're going to be left with just x. So expect to see something like that show up in the homework or on the test. The quick five second problems, easy points, free money. Take it, right? And then here's this next guy. Again, I really, really, really like this guy. So much I'm going to change my color. You probably won't be able to tell, though. This is the change of base theorem. The change of base theorem says that if you have log base A of, of B, you can rewrite this as a fraction. And you can say log, you can pick a different letter, uh, excuse me, a different base. Say log base C of B over log base C of A. You can change the base of the logarithm that you're working in to suit your own needs. And I'm going to show you how useful that is and how we could have used that on a previous problem. Typically what you do, though, is that you do this change of base so that you can just use, say, common log. And you can say the log of B over the log of A. But you could also say the natural log of B over the natural log of A. These guys are all going to have the same value, the same meaning. So now, let's see some examples that illustrate these properties and theorems. <coughs> 